this civilization or cultural hearth is called Mesopotamia. Civilization in Mesopotamia. The earliest civilization is believed to have been developed in Mesopotamia, which means land between the rivers, in Southwest Asia. By 3500 BCE, writing had developed, and by 3000 BCE, governments were well established. Please answer the questions in blue as you read. You can see here a map of where Mesopotamia was. And present day, this is Iraq and Syria, among other countries here in the Middle East, which is this area here that I'm circling. The two rivers were the Tigris and the Euphrates, which run parallel for 400 miles and joined together to empty into the Persian Gulf. Here are these two rivers up here, and they empty here into the Persian Gulf. The area is geographically accessible from many directions and was a crossroads for different cultural groups. Many groups were precursors for Hebrew and Arabic people. However, a group of people that were not from pre-Hebrew or Arabic culture were known as the Sumerians. By 3000 BCE, the Sumerians were able to create small city-states in Mesopotamia and their control grew larger. Sumerian power was possible because food produced in villages was brought from conquests by Sumerians to towns which created economic ties. Despite the economic dependence of towns often despite the economic dependence of towns, they often had many disagreements, and therefore early Sumerian history was characterized by warfare, often over competition for precious irrigated lands. You can see here another map, a little bit more zoomed in and closer of ancient Mesopotamia. Economic development. The majority of the people were farmers, herders, or workers directly associated with agriculture, such as wine pressers, millers, or carters. It is estimated that about 5% of the population lived in cities and did not grow their own food. These involved, those involved in trade were probably involved in trading food, especially grain. However, the towns and cities were the birthplaces of literacy, and the numbers involved in occupations that required the ability to read and write grew over time. Such occupations or jobs were scribes, bookkeepers, and priests. Labor systems, coordinated efforts to get work done, were generally small, with craft shops owned by f small families uh, with two to three paid slaves as laborers. Slaves made up a significant portion of the working population and were assigned unpleasant or dangerous work. So please pause and answer the blue questions as we go. And the next section is political development. The Sumerian city-states were not politically unified until around 2300 BCE. A group led by Sargon the Great conquered the entire area. He founded the Akkadian Empire, which created the great town of Akkad. As a result of the political conquest, cultural diffusion of Sumerian ways spread throughout much of the area, influencing a wide swath of land from Mesopotamia to Egypt that came to be known as the Fertile Crescent. Before Sargon's conquest, most of the city-states were theocracies, governed by gods of, or priests. Sargon changed that tradition so cities were ruled by kings, but priests usually were greatly influenced in decision-making by priests because of their high status. However, most kings were powerful warriors who controlled temples, city defenses, irrigation channels, and systems of justice. Warrior kings were able to keep loyalty from soldiers by giving them land. The system of bureaucracy grew during this time, and a system of messengers and road stations sped up communication in the area. 
During the 1700s BCE, Hammurabi led the Babylonians to conquer Mesopotamia, only to be followed by a series of other people such as the Hittites in the 1500s BCE, the Assyrians in the 900s BCE, and finally the Neo or New Babylonians in the 500s BCE. A significant marker event occurred under the Babylonians with the creation of the first known written code of laws by Hammurabi. A code of laws is a set of rules administered by a government. The code of laws gave judges many examples of punishments for crimes meant to be used as standards for justice. These codes provide insight into the social distinctions or differences of the Mesopotamian people. Social distinctions identified by the Code of Hammurabi. The free landowning class, which consisted of the royal family, priests, warriors, high government officials, merchants, and some craftsmen and shopkeepers. Secondly, a class of independent farmers and craftsmen who worked for the free landowning class. And third, slaves who did less desirable work. Women lost social standing and freedom with the spread of agriculture. They were tied to responsibilities at home and men could take more than one wife. Cultural characteristics. Another important marker event in world history was occurring in Mesopotamia around 3500 BCE with the Sumerian invention of writing. The earliest writing in evolved as pictures which turned into symbols and eventually into letters. Writing occurred on clay tablets and was known as cuneiform. It involved several hundred signs. Only specialized scribes, people who knew how, who knew the signs to write, uh, were trained to write, which gave them much more wealth and status. Like many other ancient civilizations, the Mesopotamians believed in polytheistic practices, meaning religions with more than one god, and these related to everyday life like farming, fertility, and the harvest. There were many different gods and they built temples in each city to honor the gods. These temples are called ziggurats, which looked like pyramids. You can see below in these two pictures some examples of cuneiform and an example of one of the ziggurat um, temples. Please click on this link below to see the Code of Hammurabi and please continue to work with your group to develop your group presentation on your topic Mesopotamia.